Hey, this is Rob Swanson with the Real Estate Mogul Show. Let's get into it. So the mistake most real estate investors are making is they don't have their market dialed in and the honey hole figured out. That honey hole is where all the deals are. Figure that out, everything becomes easy. And that's what we're going to be talking about over the next 10 minutes. Gentlemen, welcome to the studio. What's up? Hey, hey. Yeah, we got a good one today. We're going to be talking about speed to deal. Right? It's interesting to me. There is, if, if you've been around real estate investing for a while, if you've listened to different people, uh, you've probably inevitably heard the feast or famine, right? People people make money and then they spend it and waiting for their next deal. And then they make a little bit of money and then they spend it and then they're broke again. And it's like, rich, broke, rich, broke, rich, broke. That's that's the real estate investor model, right? And there's a way not to fall prey to that. And yet most people have to figure that out the hard way. We're going to be talking about that and how not to get sucked into it. So you guys, I mean, you guys talk to people all the time. I would assume, I would assume that that topic comes up. Yeah, Mike, I just flipped a deal. I made twenty five grand, but I had to pay this, and I had to do this, and I got to you know, blah blah blah, right? All this stuff, and now I don't have any money again. Yeah, and the pipeline's empty because all their time, energy, and effort went yes. trying to get that deal closed. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I see a lot of it too on that side as well as. They get chugging along, and then they get shiny object syndrome, and then before they look up, they've went out and purchased you know all these different tools, tricks, tips, all this stuff, and they stop doing what they were doing that got them to that first place, which was mm -hmm. speed to deal, kind of like what Mike just said, and they're trying to juggle all these systems and automation and right. and all this stuff, and you know it's just wasting time. Right. Yeah, it's like people don't get that focus is one of the most important things that they can have in their real estate investing business. Now, a lot of times people focus on the wrong thing, and they focus on the wrong thing for too long, and they don't even know they're focused on the wrong thing, right? That's a, that's a real problem. I, I know, Mike, you, you do the kickstart uh, for Freedom Soft. Yep. And I would assume in that, you know, you have people come through that and they're learning the technology and they're implementing the things to launch lead campaigns, build buyers lists, make offers, dial dial in the technology side of their business. I would assume you hear not only the feast or famine, but I, I would assume you hear the either lack of focus or you hear the focused on the wrong thing conversation show up a lot. No doubt. Yeah. And early on, I mean, we built, you know, the playbook years ago. It comes up on 98% of the kickstart calls I do. And that's because I try and bring it up. So there are a few times I've forgotten, but I try and bring it up. Yeah. Number one, who are you marketing to today? Number two, who are you following up with today? Right? The two catalysts that keep all yep. the other desired activities and results uh, in motion. Number three, who am I talking to today? And number four, who am I making an offer to? Yep. And so to your point, yes, focus is on other things when it needs to be there. And Rob, that was the playbook 30 years ago. That's the playbook today. And guess what? 30 years from now, that'll be the playbook. I think that'll be the playbook. The tech changes a little bit. Yep. Maybe some method, maybe some strategy, maybe a market or two. Yep. Right? It changes. But at the end of the day, uh, marketing, follow-up. Who am I talking to? Who am I making an offer to? And that's the name of the game. So people get scattered all the time. And what I was telling, I was just training on this yesterday. And I was telling people, until you have a foundation that's consistently spitting off the desired result you want, then if you want to go try a new marketing method or check out something else, hey, could I add this in? Would this be a benefit? Knock yourself out. But you're not going to start framing walls until you have concrete in the ground, right? Right. So foundation first, then walls, then an addition. But people get, you know, it's it's interesting with social media. You can have access to, you know, we just get bombarded. I don't know how many thousands of ideas are coming across our mind on a daily basis now. And so in my opinion, uh, it's more important than ever that you understand what am I saying yes to. But even, gal, it's either right there. I was going to say more important. I don't know that's more important, but I think it's of equal importance. What are you going to say no to for this season? 
mm-hmm. so that you can get to where you want to go. Mm-hmm. So why, you know, if we frame this for the listener, people need to make money, right? You know, I got bills, you got bills, you know, we got to we, we got to buy food or we got to feed the animals that we have that we're going to eat, you know. So somehow money, cash has to to come into the thing. And, you know, you could be like my wife, a massive organic gardener, and you could be just eating vegetables and not animals. I did catch that I said eat <laughs> animals. <laughs> yeah, so, you did. Hey, you know, love me or hate me, that's fine. Uh I love eating veggies, uh, along with a really nice uh, bone-in sirloin. <laughs> along with animals. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's right. All right, moving on. So people got to have cash coming into their business. So you talked about the foundation, right? And you know, outside of the technical skill, the foundation of a real estate investing business is the ability to generate cash. And so, what and and generate cash consistently. So you know, consistency equals on demand, right? Generate cash on demand. And what the ability to generate cash does is it fills in the valleys where you did a nice big deal, you made a bunch of money, and now you're waiting for that next big deal to close. You've got this valley where whether it's you know, personal life or it's overhead if you have a small team or a, a you know overhead with a big team, whatever it is, you're spending money that you just made to get to the next deal. And it's in that valley where you've got to fill that gap up with the ability to generate cash so that at the end of the day, the P&L and the bank account goes up and to the right, and it doesn't just stay flatlined on the bottom side. you know. And so I see this, I see this a lot. People don't understand how to Im- implement cash generation strategies in their real estate investing business for the purpose of building that solid foundation. And um, Mike, when when you or, or Henry, when you talk to, so Mike, you tend to talk to uh, more of the beginner investor, and Henry, you tend to talk a little bit more to the experienced operator. Um, I'd be curious, both of your perspectives, does the newer investor even understand that risk and and then Henry, does the experienced operator have a game plan? Uh, and and what I guess what are the most experienced operators doing to fill uh, or eliminate and reduce that risk? Either I don't, either one of you guys jump in. Cool. I don't think they have a full understanding of it. I don't. Um, but I'm happy to explain it to them. And it's really where the playbook came into play. And this has been around for a number of years now, but. So, Rob, we were after, how do we simplify this into questions when somebody wakes up? And now understand that some people are full-time real estate investor and other people are very much part-time. Yep. So whatever the case, when your real estate investor hat goes on, right, what do you do? Yep. On a daily basis. What the heck do you do? And what the heck you do is the playbook. You've got to be thinking about who am I marketing to? Now, let's say you're, you're sending... Let's, yeah, let's back that up, though. Yep. So the new guy comes in, he doesn't understand that generating cash is critical. So he goes along and he I would, decides... I would say his life understands that generating cash is critical, yep. and he's come to real estate. But what I don't think he understands is the pitfall of, he's gonna right? if he picks a market, gets some marketing out, and a deal comes in, 100% of the focus is going to go to, okay, I've got a live one. I got to get this across the finish line. And what they don't understand is they just jumped on the investor roller coaster that you've been talking about, this feast or famine, without even knowing it. And it feels like I'm doing the right thing. Yep. And then they either get the deal closed or they don't. Hopefully they do. They make some money. And then they look at the pipeline and say, oh, crap. Right. I'm back to square one. So there's 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 a time period between closed deals, right? If if you if you take a singular, linear approach to your real estate investing business, right, you're going to close a deal today, and and if you if you got that lead a while back and then you stopped your pipeline building, you focused on getting that deal across the finish line, you got the payday. That might have taken you ten days, two weeks, three weeks from 
opportunity to payday. And then you get it across the finish line and you close. And then all of a sudden, you, you, put some, you put some money in the bank and then you realize, what's my next opportunity? What am I going to do next? And so now you're starting almost from square one again, from, from yep. point zero, yep. and, it, and it takes you another month, takes you a, a, a week, three days, five days, a week to get a, a new opportunity, and then three weeks to get it across the finish line and get paid. And so this is, you know, and what we're, we're talking about here could be uh, a wholesale deal, right? Find the wholesale deal. Um, make sure that title is clean, everything is good to go, find find a buyer or pull the, the private money together um, and, and close. And so there's this cycle. Today, 30 days, then the next 30 days, then the next 30 days. In that gap, in between, in between those paydays, number one, we got the playbook. So that reminds you to keep pipeline going. That reminds you that once you get a deal across the finish line, hopefully you've got another deal going across the finish line that next week or that same week or a week and a half later, right? So you've got pipeline built. How does how does this and I'm going to come to to you Henry in a minute because I want to hear I want to hear what the operators think. But how does this thinking change based on the exit strategy that that a, a newer investor brings to the conversation, right? Some guys are thinking I'm going to fix and flip, right? And if they fix and flip, it might be instead of 30 days between a deal, yeah. it might be 6 months. Yeah, extend between that out a deal. for sure. So you you might you might go make 40 grand on your fix and flip. But now if you haven't built pipeline and you haven't done any of the the work, it might take you another month to get your next deal across the finish line and then three to four to five months to, to get that next payday. And so you made more money, but there's a longer time period between closings. So you consume and you eat that money faster. You see this on the Facebook channel so many times. Right. This guy will close this huge deal and or has in the past closed multiple huge deals. So he has quote unquote, his teams, right. Yep. Ready to do more work. And you'll see it all the time. Hey, who's got a deal for me. I got to put my guys to work. Right. Right. And th I think that's him verbalizing. Like I don't have pipeline. Like I, yep. I have nothing to make an offer on and I'm reaching out to Facebook. I guess they're trying to, that's where, that's where the wholesaler can come into play and, and pass him that good deal. But I think, that is that fix and flip investor saying, you know, I, I have nothing in my pipeline. I got to make some offers because I got, I got people I, I got to put to work, basically. Yeah. So, it, so if we if we jump that shift over to the conversation you have with operators, guys that are doing fix and flip, guys that are buying and holding to build their portfolio, and they may or may not have a cash on demand wholesaling component to their business. How often do you see them having that cash generation strategy as a core function, foundational piece of their business? For the most part, most of the people I talk to understand that that is an invaluable piece of their company. Um, because what they, what they already have, especially these higher end operators, um, what they don't feel now is because they've, they've already built, quote unquote, uh, their presence in their market or markets. So if they get that smoking deal or any deal, they are like they are not stressing over the exit strategy because they have the people on their team or partners out in the world that can help them do whatever they need to do on that deal, right? Yep. If it's a wholesale, I got three guys I can call right now that'll take this deal up. Or maybe this works for us. I got a private lender I can call right now um, or maybe we just have a hard money lender that we can go and do the fix and flip. They have all of that system set up. Um, what I'm finding or what I'm seeing is um, the step two of the playbook is where a lot of people scrambling may be the wrong word, but they're, they're shifting their mindset in that the market has changed over the last three or four years. And what they were doing or what people were really being successful at um, they're having to shift and, and change the way 
um, that they are generating leads because they understand that they, they have to have marketing out in the world all the time, right? It's not a problem for them. That's just a part of their, um, their expenses. They know that, you know, here's my budget. This is what we spend every month, right? Um, it's not a problem for them and they understand that they have to spend that and they're going to spend it. Um, the thing that I'm hearing a lot is they have their teams. They understand they have to be making offers every single day. They know the playbook, but their problem is, or their uh, challenge is, they don't know um, the best possible route to fill up that pipeline to get the most, you know, green light leads because they have a team. They have a guy, they have a mic at their office that if Mike gets on the phone with the seller, it's under contract and that's a closed deal, no problem. The thing that I'm hearing is they're having a problem getting that person to to Mike, right? They have everything ready to go. It's teed up basically. Yep. Um, but they need to get more qualified homeowners and sellers and leads onto the desk of these guys, these acquisitions people that they have already trained and ready to go. Um, so yes, they know that they need to send out marketing all the time. They can make as many offers as they potential they possibly can every single day. It's that middle piece that I'm hearing a lot in the last year. Um, like we're having to turn off PPC over here because it just wasn't functioning and we're having to go back over here. And I think the big thing that a lot of people were doing were, were, were texting. Like that's, you still hear it. Like we were texting. That's how we closed all of our deals in 2022 or this or that. And then you know, that that's in general, that piece of marketing is what I hear for operators because everything else, they're ready to go. Yep. They just need to get qualified leads onto their dashboard in the pipeline so that their mic can go do uh, his job, basically. So if we carry this forward and we start to get into solving some of this problem, right? We've, we've identified the problem. We figured out the pain. Um, and and the, the pain is I make money, then I'm broke. I make money, then I'm broke. Or, you know, the, the newer investor may not even recognize th that they've got to solve for this pain. The, the experienced operator is feeling the pain because either marketing, uh, to your point, uh, marketing channels have shifted and changed, or they have greater overhead right now. And they've got to they've got to cover that overhead in in unique and different ways. The other thing that is very interesting about this concept is, you know, the newer investor, depending on the market that they're in, if they're in a low inventory and highly competitive market, the time between deals may be longer than thirty days, right? It may it may uh, and they don't know that going in. And so they're going to do the thing that the guru said. They're going to do the thing that they watched on on YouTube, uh, but it's it's not going to produce immediate results. And then they fall fr prey to either this doesn't work or feast or famine. I, I closed a quick deal, but now why is my next deal not coming immediately on its heels, right? So um, a highly competitive market with low inventory, if that newer investor is happens to be investing in that city because they didn't give any consideration to the fact that not all markets are created equal. That feast or famine thing shows up and they're like, what hit me? How did this even happen? Why isn't this working? On the, on the other side, the operator who's got a team and he's got overhead and, and he's got crews that he's got to put to work, if he, depending on the market that he's in, he may already have five, six, seven, eight different marketing channels going, and you know he's sitting there saying, or she is sitting there saying, well, where do I need to be spending my budget? What's producing the best results? And is there literally even enough opportunity in this market for me to dial it up? Right? I need to close another one, two, three deals a month, how do I how do I dial it up and get there? Which brings in the conversation that I always expose people to and that we always talk about is add a virtual flipping component to your business. Disconnect your local geography where you live and primarily invest from the cash generation, the cash on demand 
components of your real estate investing business. Disconnect geography from where you make money. If people will do that, if people will disconnect their geography from where they're focused on making money, they can then invest in what we call easy profit cities. Now, an easy profit city is the goal of an easy profit city is not to launch three, five, seven, ten different marketing channels. The goal of an easy profit city is to use one, maybe two primary marketing channels, get that green light seller to respond, and then lay that deal down across the finish line, put it under contract, flip it to a local investor, and put seven, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars cash in your pocket. That fills the gap of the feast or famine, that dip, and it fills the coffers back with cash. Now, do that in one market, do that in a second market, do that in a third market. You're not trying to launch a lot of different marketing channels. You're not trying to figure, you know, the you're not trying to become the main guy or gay or main gal in that market. You're trying to get a quick, easy hit across the finish line every single month that takes very little effort, is uh, is consistently reproducible, um, and is high margin, right? It makes a significant amount of cash profit margin that goes right to the bottom line in your main business. Now your main business survives and, and grows and builds because you have a virtual flipping business being focused in one, two, three easy profit cities that's generating the cash that you need. The speed to deal, and this is where we started, the speed to deal in an easy profit city is much shorter and much more consistent than a non-easy profit city. And we're going we're gonna to talk about the three reasons that's the case. How often do you guys run into people, uh, and, and I would imagine it's not very often, but I'm curious, um, how often do you guys run into people that think this way? Well, to the operator side of things, I think, like, at least in the past year, their version of doing this was we have extra marketing spend that we can go do, so we're going to go and try to fill in those extra couple of deals a month by just running uh, a swath of, of nationwide PPC or something like that. Um, nothing market specific, nothing easy profit city specific to that. Um, and while that may have worked, that's where they start getting a little, they don't know where their money's going. They don't know what's going on as far as their marketing. And at the same time, they have exhausted almost every single marketing uh, idea in their main city or market because most every house or every seller has seen them at some point in the past year or, yep. or whatever that may be. So that's what I see on that side. And, and to answer your question, I, I don't, I tend to not hear that mindset. Um, and it, it's kind of funny because they know what to go and do if they were to go and do that, because again, they have the system set up. If they were to go and build that, easy profit list or something like that and send, you know, rounds of marketing to those lists for three months, two months, one month. Um, they have the acquisitions guy to answer the phone that knows how to make the offer on the phone easy. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think it's funny that you don't hear that a lot. Yeah. Well, so uh, a side, a sidebar to that, but, but directly related, Mike, you and I were out in Memphis a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And, uh, one of the guys, um, uh, a FreedomSoft user, uh, a friend. I've personally bought wholesale deals from him for my own personal portfolio. Um, we were out there. I reached out. We connected, and uh, you know he's got he's got cool stuff going on, right? He's he's got a little development, like land development thing that he put together. He's got some new new home construction. He's got some regular rehabs. You know, by by all accounts, he's got multiple different divisions, if you will, inside of his business and a, a solid, a solid business. Um, 
we we were there with some other folks and and I asked him a question. I said, "So are you focused on uh, you know, these higher end areas? Are you focused on your your building company? Are you focused on whatever as the primary piece of your business?" And Mike, what was his response? So, first off, you read my mind because I was just looking for a spot to jump in and go, "Hey Rob, you got time for a quick story?" Yeah. And I was nice. going to tell this exact story. Nice. So, we're standing in the middle of this. Rob just explained it. A semi-custom home, $700,000 little development. And you would think the topic at hand would be, hey, these homes are pretty cool. And the guy behind the development goes, you know, it's really about, I bought a piece of dirt a year ago for 1000 bucks. I just sold it for six. And he goes right back into, and I was going to use a baseball analogy. So, right. so yeah, uh, go ahead. Bought it a year ago for a thousand bucks. Yep. Sold it last week for six. Made five grand over the year. Keep going. The, right. I, That's what he was you, talking you about. You flushed was, over the the, the okay. math. Like that was a year and five grand. Right, and that's what he went to because he was he was telling us this is what keeps the lights on. Base hits out of the honey hole areas in his market. You know, um, and I, I was going to use what's happened with these TV shows is what gets views and what keeps people watching them are these impressive, massive numbers. And people that are new to real estate think that this is a game of home runs. Right. And then we get on the ground and we talk to a very active longtime operator who's doing fantastic things, running a team of like 10 or 12 people and has a great business operating. And what does he talk about? He talks about base hits. That's right. Henry played a ton of baseball. It's not a game of home runs. It's nice when they happen. It's a game of base hits and, you know, moving the team around the bases. And so, you know, I, I love this topic today because it is about consistent cash generating results. If you're in it long enough, base hits will happen. Fantastic. Or I'm yeah. sorry, home runs will happen. But we're standing. Uh, it was a it was a powerful analogy. We're standing in and around all these really cool houses. Yep. And the guy responsible for building them is talking about flip this deal, made five grand, flip this deal, made eight grand, flip this deal, made 12, flip this deal, made four. And that's what he said. He goes, that's the foundation yep. that allowed him to go launch and say, hey, here's an opportunity. What if we engineered this dirt? We got 17 lots. What if? And so now he's moving forward on it. But why is he able to do that? Because the team's hitting base hits. That's right. Yeah. And so so he or you know, any operator or any newer investor, fill in the blank, that that wants to add a cash generation component to their business, what do they do? There's there's three things. And let's let's drop them out on the on the table and then let's talk about them. So number one, what I always tell people to do is if you're operating in a non-easy profit city, the first thing you should be doing is launching a cash generating wholesaling business, a cash machine business in an easy profit city. Okay. If you're if you're primarily investing, if you live and want to invest, or if you have an operation in a non-easy profit city and you want to fill in the gaps of cash generation, launch in an easy profit city. Now, so that's that's the first thing I would tell people is if you're in an easy profit city, then I would tell you consider the expansion of your marketing channels in that in that easy profit city if you're already there. So the first scenario was I'm not in an easy profit city, get into one. The second scenario is I'm in an easy profit city, but I'm trying to do more. I'm trying to take my business to the next level. I'm trying to get speed to deal more consistently. My team wants to make more money. I want to make more money. We want more consistency. We want to eliminate feast or famine. Number one, I would say evaluate your easy profit city. And the second piece of it is find the honey holes in that spot and focus your marketing dollars and your efforts there. Okay. So if you're in an easy profit city, we jump to know that the second thing in our in our rule of three here is grid your market and focus on your honey holes. So number one, pick and launch in an easy profit city. Number two, grid that market using 
uh, a technique that I've taught for years, a pinpointing technique, and find the honey hole. Find where the inventory and the investor activity overlap and put your effort, your skill, your marketing dollars, your focus in those areas. That will produce the greatest speed to deal of anything you can do. And number three, target the right audience or the right list in that area. So number one, pick the market. Number two, identify the hot spot area in that market. And number three, identify the right list of audience or sellers in that area to put your marketing dollars on. If you get those three things right, market, honey hole area, and the right seller list, your speed to deal will be short, consistent, and your cost per deal will go down dramatically. That's how you scale up and build your operation. Yeah, and I, th I think like listeners may hear is like, wow, man, that that seems like it's going to take me a, a whole weekend to do, or <laughs> like yeah. I don't I don't have the tool to do that, or like where do I even start, kind of thing. But like in general, like let's just say you a listener is a FreedomSoft user. We've showed it on the podcast. We've showed it in trainings. Those three steps, you're like with data, um, you know, you're five, six clicks away from knowing the answers to, uh, to those questions. Right. And, and and then, you know, I I do a version of the playbook on the Wednesday night onboardings to brand new users of FreedomSoft. I don't go through the whole playbook on purpose because most of the avatar in that specific call are brand new users of FreedomSoft. So the last thing that I want to do is show them front to back FreedomSoft. Here's everything that you can do. Um, when they already told me at the beginning of the call, I asked them, what, what are you guys here to do? What do you want more of? And they said, I want to close more deals and I want more leads. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> Let's start there. Yeah. If that's the case, then we're only going to focus on steps one and step two of the playbook. And until you got that dialed, don't worry about anything else. Step one, who, which is what you were talking about, yep. which is who and where basically. And then step two is how we're going to market to them. Yep. That's that's all I talk about in an hour of time because most of the people on that call haven't been talked to that way before. Um, specifically, they like what we talked about today. We should go do all of these things all at once. You should go do all of this in your expensive market or something like that. And the last thing that they've heard is like, no, let's just reverse engineer it. Step one, step two, write it down, go do it. Well, you know, here here's the thing. I I I live in San Diego, right? This is I'm I'm speaking as an <laughs> investor. I live in San Diego. I, I wanna I wanna fix and flip a house, and so I'm like, okay, real estate is my thing. I'm I'm in, and all of a sudden you realize, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this 1.7 million dollar house. Maybe I can pick it up for a million dollars. Okay, now what do I got to do? I got to go raise capital. So I got to find that deal. I got to learn how to find that deal. Then I got to learn how to make the offer. Then I got to learn how to raise the capital. Then I got to learn how to find the rehab and construction crews. Then I got to learn how to manage a rehab. Then I got to learn how to sell it on the market. I, I got to figure out, and I got to make sure that all of my math is run and done right. Right? All, that's a lot of skill and a lot of effort to get that deal across the finish line. So if I'm that guy or gal sitting in San Diego and my objective is to get into real estate, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go find an easy profit city. I'm going to figure out what area in that easy profit city is the honey hole. And there's usually three to five targeted areas in any city that you can hone in on. And then I'm going to go build that list and I'm going to drop direct mail into those three to five targeted areas. And I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait. Why? Because I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait I'm going to, and I'm going to let my direct mail land and I'm going to let the green light sellers respond. The seller in that easy profit city, not a San Diego, in an easy profit city, generally a lower priced um, cash flowing market, that seller is going to respond. 
I'm not inter I don't care about the the sellers that respond that are red light sellers that tell me take me off the list I'm never going to sell. I kind of care but I kind of don't care about the yellow light sellers, right? The, the sellers that I really have to work hard to to get a deal across the finish line. I'm looking for the green light seller. The guy or gal that responds to my marketing and says, "I have a problem, I have a pain, I'm interested in selling, can you solve it?" That's what I'm looking for. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to experience the fact that that worked. Wow. It actually worked. I got a I got an inbound lead from somebody who said I'm interested in selling. Now, people are going to say, "Well, I've sent direct mail." And I didn't get that kind of call. I sent, you know, 2,000 postcards and I only got 8 phone calls and they all said take me off the the list. Okay, number 1, you probably were not in the right in an easy profit city. Number two, you probably did not target. You probably had a little bit of a mutt, you know, as far as your targeted area goes. You were not focused in on the honey hole. And number three, you probably didn't have the right list and audience uh, that you marketed to that is consistently selling in that honey hole area in that easy profit city. So I'm telling people, if they can hone in those three things, their their direct mail is going to produce results. It 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 produces every single time. Now, there are times where you might drop direct mail, depending on how big or small you're you're dropping. If let's say you drop a thousand postcards, you, you know, and, and you spend six hundred bucks doing that, you might not get a deal across the finish line that, on that first 600 bucks. It might take a second drop to that same list to create the consistency to get that response. But I will tell you, what you're doing is you're setting up a consistently focused recurring effort that's gonna suck out a green light seller that you're going to jump on the phone and you're going to solve their problem and they're going to send you a, a Christmas card. That's what you're looking for. Now, once you experience it working in one easy profit city, it's very easy to launch that into a second. And you do the same thing, repeat the same process, and launch it into a third. You repeat the same process. And, and now what you're waiting for is in each market, in each city, each month, you're waiting for the one or two or three green light sellers to raise their hand and you take that deal across the finish line. You solve that seller's problem and you take it across the finish line and you get paid very well to do it. That's how a new investor can get into this game, speed to deal and create consistent paydays and, and move the bank account up and to the right and it's how an experienced operator can expand their business, use the skills of their team, and when they feel stuck in their own market and they've exhausted the marketing channels and they're trying to add cash to, uh, to the P&L, cash to the bottom line every single month, how do, you, how do you do that? What's an easy way to do it? Well, expand your wholesaling operation into one, two, or three easy profit cities to get started and start generating the cash. What would you guys fill in as, what, what would you add to that approach? Well, I think you started to touch on it a little bit at the end is that, you know, a lot of times, not a lot, but sometimes, especially on um, smaller lists or very niche type markets or anything where people tend to lead with emotion, like I feel, if I go into this neighborhood because I heard those are like the keywords or the buzzwords that I that I hear investors talk about, like I heard or my buddy did X in that. So I'm going to go and build my list of these type of people. And it's very small, like 150 people. Yep. And then, you know, they almost get hurt over direct mail because that's when Mike and I hear all oh, direct mail is broken. It doesn't work. I'm never going to do it. Or the classic it's old school. It's who does that anymore kind of thing. I still hear that all the time. But it's funny because that's coming from the newer investor because it's what they heard and they haven't experienced it yet. Whereas the operators 
I'm seeing a transition of slowly going back to the classics, basically, yep. and uh, making that marketing machine of direct mail always running, running for them. Yep. Well, that's why, you know, as we saw the writing on the wall and we saw the wild west of text messaging lead generation that over the last decade, I mean, that was fast, easy, cheap leads and and deals like across the finish line. It was great. <laughs> like it, it was awesome. But we could see the writing on the wall, both from a legislative standpoint, from a from a carrier response standpoint, uh, from, you know, just the responsiveness of that working standpoint going away. And so, you know, at, at FreedomSoft, we looked at that and said, well, what's going to replace this for investors? This thing that's been working phenomenally for the last eight, nine years that everybody jumped on the bandwagon with, including us. But as it's going away, and it's going away in like step downs, like it, it didn't just completely fall off the cliff on day one. It's stepping its way out of existence. And we replaced that with a direct mail engine in FreedomSoft called MailNow. And the cool thing about the MailNow direct mail engine is I don't care what CRM you use. If you want to use FreedomSoft, great. I think you should. But if, you, if you've got a CRM that your business is tied into and tentacled into, and but you want to use the direct mail engine, the real time tracking direct mail engine, and the and and the mail uh, design studio that we've got in FreedomSoft, you can plug that into any CRM, and that's why the foundation of you know Easy Profit City, right area, right list, the found the marketing foundation is based then on direct mail. Because it's it's what I would call a passive lead generation effort. If I if I put my mail in the right areas, if I put my my mail in the right city, in the right area to the right audience with the right message, I will get responses. What most people do is they go they go generic, they go a little bit uh, they go broad or wide, with not only the area they're targeting but also the audience they're targeting. And then they go with a general or generic message. And that's when they don't get results. When people realize that if you match the message to the market, i.e. The, the audience you're sending to, and you hit that specific pain, you're going to get a response. And it consistently works. I've been doing it for over 20 years. Direct mail has always been my go-to, my foundation, and it works today as well as it ever has. Direct mail does work. Most people don't do it right. Rob, I was just going to throw in a little commentary about this whole process, and what I like about it is you're not operating on a hunch. We're operating on data. Right. And it's interesting how emotions get tied into real estate on both sides and really when it's done well it's not emotional it's data driven yep and so i want people to hear that message uh the tv shows they all want to invoke emotion yep but the operators who are long time in this business like yourself that know the game understanding of what's going on uh emotion for the most part almost completely is taken out of it mm -hmm. and it's what are my easy profit cities where are the honey holes what's the messaging i need to target it's very methodical. Yep. It's almost scientific. Yep. And then the consistent result comes. And so um, just want, you know, like I said, just want to add in some commentary about there that there's no gut feeling. There's no hunch. There's no yeah. hearsay. The easy, what does the data show? Yeah. The, and the easy part is the easy part is this. The easy part is picking and building the right list and getting the right message in front of them. That's the easy part. Because in FreedomSoft, they're pre-built lists, right? I can go in and I can build a vacant house list. I can go in and I can build um, a, a, a tired landlord list. I can build an, uh, uh, let's see, a variety of other lists, right? So the, I, I go to those two because those two tend to be like personally my go-to. Uh, I love the vacant house list. I love the tired landlord list, those two. 
and then w the way Freedom Soft works is you match that up with a pre-built direct mail sequence. So kind of like an like an autoresponder, uh, like automated recurring marketing that matches the sequence with templates that speak exactly to you own a vacant house. Oh, you're a tired or frustrated landlord. The messaging in those sequences is consistent to the problems and the pain that those homeowners, those sellers experience. The, that's, the, that's, the, that's the easy part. The, the part that most people don't figure out is the, is the easy profit city and then how to find the honey hole. It's targeting the right area because it's really easy to build the list. It's really easy to get the right message to that list if you just follow the prompts inside of FreedomSoft. The question is, are you now targeting building that list and sending that mail in the right area, in the honey holes? And have you picked the right city that is going to produce consistent and quick results? Yeah, I, I actually see this firsthand all the time on that Wednesday onboarding. It's funny because I, I always engage the audience. I don't like to sit there and talk to myself. I, I ask people questions and I, I yeah. love for people to talk back to me. Um, so when I get to this portion of the training where we're talking about what market are you in? Uh, have you ever built a list in your market? And it's funny because you'll find a newer user, but not a new investor because they are, uh, they are ingrained in their local market, meaning that's yep. where they live. Yep. And it's very obvious too, when you'll find if that person is aware of the potential in their market or not aware of yeah. the potential. And that's, if they're not aware, it's probably because they haven't had a tool like FreedomSoft to showcase that data to them. And it's it's really cool to watch that light bulb come off when uh, I, it, it, was a, it was a gal in Michigan, a uh, great like suburban market in Michigan, um, maybe like outside of Detroit or something like that. Um, and it got to a point where the list size of vacants was around um, 1,400 or 1,500 large. And I asked her, hey, have you, have you ever built this list? Did you know that this is the massive amount of potential that's here? And she was like, no, I've never marketed to that list. And I was like, well, if I were you, I would download this list today and match it up to the sequence. Because her next question before I could even get there was like, okay, well, now how do I send direct mail to it? And what would I send? Well, watch these three clicks and I can have a queued up three vacant postcard sequence queued up to those exact people going out in the next three months. Having that at your fingertips on a Wednesday night that you've never experienced is, is mind blowing to some people and as it should be. Yeah. And, you know, even experienced operators, uh, you know, a, a lot of times they've got a they've got a list and a data provider over here and they've got a CRM over there and they've got a mail house they're using uh, on, on the other side of the wall over there. And they've got, the, you know, the phone system over here that they've got to get dialed you know, to make sure that the right phone number is routing to the right people, is the right numbers on the postcard, the right list gets matched to the postcard, to the mail house. Like, they've got all of these complicated, cumbersome pieces in order to just get a thousand postcards yeah. out the door. It's almost like that could potentially be the reason why they don't like direct mail. Yeah. It's because they're they're almost totally shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, in totally. Yeah. And so... And so in FreedomSoft, you build that list. You showed that, that lady how to do that. You built the list. You clicked add to list or create new list, right? 1,400 records on a list. Select all. Send direct mail. Mm -hmm. Send direct mail. Vacant multi-step sequence. Boom. Yeah. Done. In that same vein, you'll you'll see the other people chime in, like with their markets, right? Yeah. And almost like nine times out of ten, you can almost tell that it's like I live in blank. Yep. It's so that they yep. are living there, and sometimes it's a I would consider it an easy profit city or leaning close to it. Basically, it's it's yep. more half and half, fifty fifty. Yep. Um, and then you'll see the Portlands, the Seattles, the Washingtons, the Denver, Colorados, yep. some bigger cities. And they'll say, you know, oh, I just built that list and there's like 10 vacant houses in my zip code. It was like, I, I sent direct mail to those people and I got no response. Was, but this is exactly why we're talking about what we're talking about. Because yeah. it's probably not the best use of your time. 
Well, that's that's right. You're 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 targeting a non-easy profit city, and so your your solution to cash on demand is launching virtually into an easy profit city. Figure that out, and you will and you'll win. Continue beating your head against the wall, and eventually you'll either give up or you'll succumb to okay, I got to do something different. And it's likely that you'll land on what we're saying up front today. Learn, you're going to either learn the hard way or you're going to learn from someone else's experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we see this all the time because we talk to so many real estate investors every single week. We see the, we see the, the mental blocks that people have sometimes uh, around thinking a little different. And so usually on these uh, onboardings and in the internal trainings that we do, it's a lot of times to demonstrate something to someone and show them, here's what you think. Let me show you why something else is true. And let me show you how this thing that, that I'm going to show you is true will actually help you produce the results you want. Mm -hmm. So, gentlemen, that's, uh, that's been a good one. Um, any anything else we got to round out and wrap up as we uh, as we bring this one to a close? I just want to drive home the need for people to follow this. Um, so many investors out there have come to the conclusion that hey, it just doesn't work. Well, not in that market, it doesn't absolutely works. So, Rob, you're, I don't know that I've uh, I'm not aware of anybody else that's screaming easy profit cities from the rooftop. Um, I, you know, you would know if you had any company up there, I don't think there's a ton. Um, I was exposed to this early on because we, you know, we've been working together since May of 08, basically. Yep. So this to me is kind of normal, but I know from talking to just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of investors over the years, this is not the way most people think. And so I just want to encourage people to pay attention to, to what's being said on this, because this is a game changing philosophy mm -hmm. in the, in the investing world. Yeah, I think a lot of the things that you hear is deep in a market with a specific type of, of motivation or a type of specific marketing yep. or deep as far as getting really good at a type of marketing nationwide or in a broad span. And that tends to be the focus uh, that can really push you away from where the easier wholesale deals could potentially be. Yep. So, yeah, to that point, that's what I see as well. Love it. All right, guys. Well, that's another one in the uh, in the books. We'll see you next week. Cheers.